Welcome to Welcome News to Desk on SiliconANGLE TV and happy Halloween. Today is Wednesday, October 31st, 2012 and I'm Kristen Folletti. New York City is now forced to deal with the aftermath of Superstorm Stan Sandy, but as social media continues to weigh in on the destruction, should we really believe every tweet? Joining us now with her breaking analysis on social media deception is SiliconANGLE News Desk Editor Kristen Nicole. Welcome Kristen. Hurricane Sandy continued to take a toll on internet infrastructure in New York City and beyond on Tuesday. Can you give us some examples of the disruptions they're experiencing out there? Yeah, storms are always potentially bad for the, the underlying cables and fiber optic networks that run the internet. And uh, it seems that Hurricane Sandy did have an impact on one of the underwater cables that run across the Atlantic. The AC2 um, had, had some damage to it uh, over, over the course of the past few days. Now, which of these would you say is the most significant issue facing them right now? Well, it seems like uh, some of the damage that happened to the infrastructure in, in the Manhattan area, um, especially the ones that have impacted uh, server hosting providers, um, you know, that has a trickle-down effect and, and can impact a lot of websites that run on those servers and the, the end users that try to access uh, these services and, and websites are impacted. So is that also which would impact the most customers then? Yeah, it, it has the, the widest impact. Um, you know, when you have when you're impacting a, a hub like that, uh, that services a, a broad number of, of users and consumers and companies alike. The storm's putting the true test on major companies' disaster recovery procedures in terms of infrastructure. Do you think these companies were as prepared as they could possibly be for Sandy? It certainly seems like uh, certain precautions and steps were taken. If this had happened uh, 10, even five years ago, we wouldn't have, uh, we probably would have seen more damage and more websites that have gone down and, and more infrastructure damage that, that happened in that regard. We've since taken lots of steps towards backup and recovery and rerouting servers. And um, we've kind of learned from past experiences, weather can have very grave impact on, on our infrastructure. And uh, just like we've learned to reinforce homes and buildings for things like earthquakes and hurricanes, we've also made several improvements to our, our infrastructure. As reporting on Hurricane Sandy and its aftermath continues, the spotlight on social media is shifting. Over the past few days, YouTube and Twitter have been hailed for providing coverage and useful information to the victims of the storm, as well as the general public. However, the slew of misinformation is now coming to light, and one tweeter in particular is in the hot seat. The tweeter going by the name of at comfortably smug started the rumor that the New York Stock Exchange was flooded under three feet of water, and eventually even CNN was reporting it. What other rumors did he originate? It seems like there were a few. I think one of the wildest was that uh, the Will Smith movie about zombies in New York was coming true. Um, and of course, with 2012 supposedly being the apocalypse year, um, things like that really can, can get a lot of attention. Uh, and uh, see, I think one of the other ones was that the power was going to be preemptively shut off. That one actually turned out to be um, somewhat true. So uh, that. A little bit of truth mixed in there, a little bit of speculation, lots of craziness. Smug has since apologized for his actions, but we've heard that there could possibly be criminal charges brought against him for spreading the in misinformation. Is that true? And if so, what could they charge him with? And do you think he should be brought up on charges? Yeah, it seems like um, so the, they're going to go, the legal system is going to pursue this for, for the spreading of false information. Um, and setting an example with this really i think the fact that hurricane sandy had such a large impact uh, hit major cities um, the center of our, our economic system really someone wants to make an example of this case and try to minimize the amount of misinformation that gets spread across the internet um, i'm not surprised that they're pursuing legal actions here uh, we've seen lots of situations like this where someone is posting things publicly on a public forum like Twitter and not necessarily realizing the implications of, of what they're doing, or maybe they are, but um, it's it's accessible to, by the public. And this uh, has added um, implications as to the, the impact of the messages that are being spread and the actions that people take because of that information. So 
when it comes to internet trolls like this that really take advantage of a democratized platform like Twitter, you do want to minimize that that type of and, and discourage that type of activity. But I don't think that even if they are able to prosecute uh, comfortably smug, that it's going to stop internet trolling. Fortunately, social media is also able to right the wrongs just as quickly. In response to the New York Stock Exchange flood rumor, people nearby uploaded photos of the building looking high and dry to dispel the myth. How many of these rumors did you hear, and how long was it before you saw corrections to them? There were several rumors that got spread uh, over the course of the past two days in particular, and the sad thing about... Uh, situations like this that can be very dire situations and very stressful on an entire nation um, is that there's always people that want to take advantage of that uh, fact that lots of people are kind of honing in on one particular news story. Uh, we see this with uh, when uh, Osama bin Laden was uh, killed and caught. People are taking advantage of that, spreading malware, spreading false pictures, um, and some of it is to get attention some of it, who knows the reasoning behind some of these things. Uh, but when it really comes down to it, the fact that this is a democratized platform also means that the people out there that are really adamant about righting these wrongs and dispelling myths have just as much um, influence and access and, and power as the people that spread them. Social media allows for information to be distributed rapidly, but sometimes, as we've discussed, the speed of that delivery can backfire, especially when not all of the information is available. Uh, is there a way big data could play a role in organizing social media to make it more comprehensive? There's some ways, and, and there's some companies that are exploring this. Um, and when it comes to the platform itself, something like Twitter or, or Google, there's pressures from certain organizations that really want Twitter to be responsible for some of this. I don't know if that's necessary, um, but with the, the techniques and, and the technology behind some of the big data systems that we're seeing emerge largely as a result of what's going on with social media platforms like Twitter, there is some ways to kind of sift out the, the truth from the fiction and um, organize information in a way that can be beneficial. Uh, of course, real-time analysis is one of the, the factors here. Um, and the better we get at all of this, we can take several things into account uh, from the type of information a person is publishing on the web in the past and the connections that they have throughout social media um, and some of the actions that they've taken. So this kind of analysis could certainly help. There's probably not uh, any way to uh, solve this or cure this 100%. Um, there's always ways to get around certain systems, but I certainly do think that some big data technology could, could aid us in that regard. Do you think social media should have more filters or regulations in place to monitor this kind of behavior? Maybe. Uh, it depends on the type of platform and, and the type of um, the type of community that's, that's building around it, but it ultimately is the responsibility of the people. Uh, I mean, we all have the ability to, to speak and share and speak our minds, um, share our thoughts, and we have to hold ourselves responsible. And, and ultimately, um, the beauty of something like Twitter is we're able to hold each other responsible. Well, Kristen, thanks so much for your time today, and we appreciate you joining us. Thank you. For in-depth coverage on news of the day and breaking analysis on tech innovation, keep up to date with News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV.